if the lower thirds with dockable control panel is giving you problems with timing issues, with permission issues, with thumbnails not functioning properly, or with the OBS 27.2 update, this tutorial will provide a stable workaround. This video will teach you new methods that you never knew existed when showing lower thirds for your live stream. Oh, dude, wait till you see this tutorial. It is absolutely epic. Okay, if you don't know who I am, my name's Scott. I'm the guy who teaches OBS Studio on a deep dive kind of way. Okay, but you're gonna love these videos. Now check this out. I just learned how to make a After Effects video with motion masking, okay? Check the video out, you can download it in the description. Once you bring it into OBS, you'll notice that it's only eight seconds long, but you can pause it electronically with the advanced scene switcher. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Then, once you pause it in about four seconds, you can command the move transition to bring in multiple sources, and they're animated as well. Your face, your name, maybe a scrolling text, okay? It looks like it's all part of the one video, but it's not, it's customizable by you. So once that stuff is added and paused at a time that you want, and then it goes away, then you can restart the lower third video and it whoop, shrinks back up and it looks so slick. Check out this demo. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. 100% customizable by you with the exception of the video itself. Go to the description to download the file. If you were lucky enough to sign up for the three-dimensional subscribe and bell graphics, there were nine of them, built in Blender, 1080p, 60 frames a second, alpha channel, congratulations, I'm gonna send you, or I have sent you, 19 colored variants so that you can use the lower third in your own channel so that it matches your brand. Congratulations, and if you wanna get on this list, it's easy. Go into the description, look for the mention for free, Three-dimensional subscribe and bell buttons. They're built in Blender. Again, 1080p, 60 frames a second, alpha channel. They're high quality. You're going to love them. Get them. You get on the list. And then next time I send out graphics, you get them. Okay, let's get some. Let's go with the tutorial. Mm. Electrify your online presence with live, live streaming. streaming. Okay, we need to install two plugins to make this work. I will put links in the description of this video so that you can find the pages easily. Shut, Shut down, down OBS, OBS and let's go into the first page which is the OBS Advanced Scene Switcher. Click the white button in the upper right hand corner and it will automatically download a zip file to your computer. If I go and take a look at the contents of that zip file, double click it here, I'll show you what's inside here. There's a, a folder called Scene Switcher. Double click that and we have a installation files for Linux, Mac and Windows. Mac has a package file and Windows has an EXE. Double click the EXE and boom, it just installs the files for you automatically. Same thing goes for the other plugin, which is the Move Transition plugin. So if we go to that page, click the download button here in the upper right hand corner. Now you can choose which operating system that you have. For example, I have Windows. I wanna use the installer because it's so much easier. I'll click the download button and it downloads the zip file. I already have it on my system now. So I'll just go in there and I'll show you what it looks like. If I open it up inside WinZip here, as you can see, it has the installer.exe file. Double click it, let it do its magic, and you're good to go. Restart OBS after installing both programs. Here we go. Okay, let's set up our scenes and sources. I'll click the plus sign under scenes, and I'll call this lower third. I'll hit okay. I'll click the plus sign in the sources column here, and I'm gonna select color source, and I just wanna make a background that's gray. So I'll just type in gray here. And, oh, gray's already selected, beautiful. Hit okay. And now we have a gray background. That way we can see text or anything that is the color black. I'll hit the plus sign under sources again. And now I'm gonna add the lower third movie. I'll click media source here. I'll call it LT movie two. I'll hit okay. And click browse and select a lower third here. I'll just click this one. And I will make sure that loop is not selected. Restart playback when source becomes active and show nothing when playback ends are both clicked off, okay? Make sure that you set that properly, hit okay. And as you can see, the lower third is way too big for the screen and you're like, ah, why, Victor, why? Well, I like to have a larger resolution video for a smaller screen because it makes it look sharper. So the, the best way to fix that is to click the source with the lower third, to make sure it's selected, and hit Control or Command F. And that shrinks it right down to the perfect aspect for the screen. So when we go back in to see it again now, watch what happens. Yes, it's perfect. Okay, moving on. 
So setting this up in the right order is absolutely crucial. You would think that the next step would be to add the text sources and the image of your face next. The answer is no, because the lower third is only eight seconds long, and you only have about two seconds of static non-motion on the lower third to place the various elements over top of the lower third, right? So the next step now is to go into the advanced scene switcher and pause this lower third video, let's go. Okay, go and click tools at the top of OBS Studio and select the sub choice of advanced scene switcher. And you wanna select the macro tab. And on the left window here, there's a plus sign in the lower left-hand corner. Click that. We're going to click a brand new macro. We'll call it pause. You can call it anything you want. I'll hit OK. And in the top section here, you'll see a little plus sign. We're going to designate what gets paused and when, OK? So we'll hit the plus sign here. And it says if, and we want to select source. Now, you don't see source in the list, but it is a scroller. So scroll down, and there it is. Click source. And then we select our source, which is LT Movie 2, is showing. Then we want to select this timer icon. It opens up, and we want to select for at least 5.3 seconds. And the reason why that's important is because that's when the lower third comes into full view. And we want to make sure seconds is selected, which it is. So that's when we want to pause it. But now we have to command the system to actually pause it. So we go down to this lower section, hit the plus sign here, and we want to select media, pause, and then we select our media, which is LT Movie 2. So two, two things, or actually three things. Number one, I'm going to enclose these settings as an image in the zip file that you'll download that will contain the lower third video. That way you can reference it anytime that you want. I want to also let you know that you need to click off the run macro in parallel to other macros because we're going to command it to unpause. So that's two macros at the same time. So we have to check that off. And then thirdly, if you exit out of this window, Without hitting close, your settings will vanish. So, so close, close equals, equals save. save. So, so hit close. close. Okay, let's see if the media source pauses at the right time. I'll click the lower third scene, and it comes into play, and bam! Yes, it freezes at the right moment. Now we can place all the text and image sources in the right place to make it work. Let's go! Okay, now that we've overlaid the text and image sources over the video lower third, we will now control its motion with the Move Transition plugin. <laughs> okay, here's what's gonna happen. Let's pretend this is your screen and this represents the text that will overlay on the lower third video. We're gonna create three filters. The first filter keeps your text out of the frame, right? Out of view. Then there's gonna be another filter that, based on a specific time period, brings the text into view, and then more time transpires and it moves out of view and stays out of view until you bring the frame back in, and then it does the thing over again, okay? So that takes three filters. I'm gonna create these filters right now without any parameters, so you can follow along. Let's go. Adding the filters is really easy with a move transition. Right click on the scene containing the lower third video, select filters, then click the plus sign in the lower left hand column here and select move source. I'm going to create these scenes right now. Here we go. Let's first start by making changes to the parameters that are the same for all three filters. So let's go into the hidden state here and we want to make sure that the source is txt scott victor which is my name we want to scroll down and make sure that the start trigger is active when the filter becomes actively shown those are the two parameters for all three so i'll go real quick and make changes to the other two 
Now we're going to designate the placement of the text source. We have three filters. One is hidden, the next one's visible, and then finally hidden again. So if we click the first filter, which is hidden, we're going to hide the text. So I'll slide the entire window over just a tad so I can see the actual OBS window. I'm going to drag that text source out of view, and I'm going to make sure that hidden is selected, scroll down, and click Get Transform. Boom, it took. Now I'll select the next one, which is visible, and I'll bring that text source back into view. You can hit your arrow keys to nudge this just to make it look pretty. And I'll scroll back down. While I'm invisible, I will click Get Transform. Boom, it took again. Finally, we'll go into the Hidden No Loop filter, and we'll move it back out of view again. Make sure it's blue when you click that Get Transform button. has to be blue. Boom and it took. Now we'll hit close, and those positions are now officially saved. Now we have to designate the sequence when the filters are played, and basically what we're gonna start out as the text will be hidden, then it comes into visible, and then when visible is played out, it then goes to hidden again, right? So click your hidden filter, scroll all the way to the bottom, and we change it with the next move. So the next move for hidden would be visible. Go to visible, go all the way to the bottom, next move will be hidden again, and hidden will not have a next move, so it remains none, and each one should have a next move on as move end. Now we must be concerned with the timing of the sequence, and you'll notice that there is a start delay and an end delay for each filter. This can get really confusing if you choose to put times into both. You should choose only one, and in this scenario, I chose to add times into the start delay. So the hidden state has no start delay. It initiates immediately, but when you go to the visible state, there's a start delay of 4,100 milliseconds, right? So it doesn't initiate right away. Then, after it's done doing its thing, it goes into the hidden state, and that start delay doesn't occur until 2,100 milliseconds. Just copy these times in, just follow along with the tutorial. I will provide screen grabs showing you all the parameters so that you can go along and recreate this at your own speed. But for now, just stick with the start delay and just copy the times that I'm providing for you. Okay, we're gonna test to see if all the timing works, but remember, we paused the lower third video forever. We need to reactivate play. So let's go back into the advanced scene switcher real quick. Tools, advanced scene switcher. We're gonna click the macro tab again, and here's that pause action. We paused it at 5.3 seconds, but we never told the system to unpause it. So let's click the plus sign, and we'll name it play. Hit okay. And we wanna make absolutely sure that the macro runs in parallel with all the other macros. If you don't check that off, then it won't work because the other one is working at the same time. So we gotta check that off, hit the plus sign here. If scene, we want to make it say if the scene and the current scene is, current scene is, select our scene, lower third, click the timer for at least seven seconds, all right? And then go down here to the plus sign and select media, play the media, LT movie two. So it pauses at 5.3, then the other counter counts up to seven and unpauses it. So let's hit close, and we'll click the lower third scene, and let's see if this thing works. The movie starts, the text comes in, there's a pause, text goes out, and the play starts again, and the lower third goes away. Can you begin to see the power that I've taught you? I've taught you how to use a lower third video. You can pause it at any moment that you wish. You can actually pause the lower third before it even comes into view, you see? Now that you have control over timing all over all aspects of the video and the individual text sources and imagery and anything, you can do subscribe buttons, lower third buttons, you can apply this to overlays, anything. I have given you the keys to the power of OBS Studio. I hope you enjoyed and understand the absolute epicness of this tutorial. If you have any questions, post them in comments. I will answer them as best as I can. Best wishes to you. Stay strong and keep fighting. Give me some questions. Stay strong and keep fighting.